Hey everyone, it's Steve from Network Advisor. I actually have to set up for a video I'm making, but gives me an opportunity to show you something that I think you might be useful. So, all right, so what I'm gonna do is here in my studio lab, which is kind of a tiny office, I'm going to take where this patch panel is right here and run a network wire from there, um, either in the wall or maybe outside the wall, up into the ceiling, then I'm gonna go through the ceiling tiles and I'm going to come down again into the drywall so I'm actually going to go inside the wall and I'm going to come down somewhere in this area and put a jack on the wall so the point being here is that if you watch this it will give you the information you need to understand how to run your network wires or how to install a network wire from a patch panel to a jack on the wall and, and also how to terminate the wires and so forth. So a pretty important part of this adventure is making sure we've got a path through the ceiling. And if you're lucky enough to have drop tile ceilings, as I do here, you can push one of those up. And if you're not familiar with being up in the ceiling, then you need to proceed with extreme caution because it can be a hostile environment. For one thing, it's usually dirty. Oftentimes it's very random with all kinds of things going different directions, little hanging wires poking, so watch your eyes. And there's usually cables and duct work and plumbing pipes. And once you get up there, you should be able to determine if you've got a clear path to take your wire from point A roughly to point B where you're going to want to penetrate the top of the wall then go down to where your outlet's going to go. All right, so you'll want to start with your spool of wire, or pull boxes work fine. You can find Category 5, Category 6, Category 7 cable online or in the big box stores. And I just like working with spools, just kind of my favorite. You want to get that set up somewhere, I'm going to be pull the cable from. So we're going to be pulling from this location, usually your network room, you know, the place where you keep your network equipment. Because I'm only going a short distance, I'm just holding the raw wire in my hand. But for longer distances, what I would usually do is connect it to like some kind of a long pole, like a painter's pole or even, even like a broom stick will work so that you can use it as a way to span a large distance without having to, you know, throw the cable, then move five feet on the ground, push the tile up and move it again. Anyway, here's the header that I'm going to penetrate. So this is the top of the wall. It's made out of two by four. In commercial environments, it's oftentimes made out of tin. And I know that a lot of times when you find the destination on the wall where you want your jack, it's tempting to immediately start cutting the hole down below to put the mud ring in and then, you know, go up to the top and drill your hole. I recommend you start by drilling your hole in the header first to make sure you've got access and a clear way to get from where you are up here in the top ceiling down to where you're going to cut the hole in the wall. Sometimes you do them in reverse order, then you get burned because you find out there's no way to get from up here down to there. So this header is made out of a two x four. So I'm going to be using a uh, wood saw to cut a hole in there. Um, there's other things you can use. You could just use one drill bit and just make several holes and just kind of take a little, you know, owl and just kind of uh, wiggle out the wood pieces. Also in a lot of modern commercial construction, the header oftentimes is made out of a like, a like a tin, like a steel, a thin steel, so you'll have to use something appropriate for that. All right, here we go. All right, so the spot where I'm gonna actually make the hole into the wall and put the, the face plate and the jack one of the important things to do is to make sure you're not cutting in where there's a stud. So a stud is a vertical piece of either steel or lumber pole that runs up and down. It's what the drywall mounts to, and there's one every 16 inches. Or depending, I mean, it can vary a little bit, and because it can vary, it's important to check. Now, if you've been doing this for a long time, you can kind of knock on the wall and you can hear the difference between where it kind of sounds hollow and where it sounds solid. Or you can use a stud finder. It's kind of a, no, I don't know if these are terribly expensive, maybe $20. So if you do this a lot, these are not bad to have. And what the stud finder does is it is it kind of sends like a signal into the wall 
and when it encounters a stud, it beeps. And the reason is is because we don't want to cut where there's a stud because that won't do us any good. We want to be in the sections in between the studs because that's where our wire is going to come down. And then this thing right here is a uh, it's a low voltage bracket for mounting jacks in the wall. Um, sometimes it's referred to as a mud ring. And what's going to happen is I'm going to take this thing. I'm going to put this where I need it. Generally, outlets are usually just for most average people. It's, it's about the same as like right, right below your kneecap, you know, so, so just about an inch below your knee height is where this goes. And I'm going to make like a little pencil outline of where I want this to be. And then I'm going to come back with a keyhole saw, cut the hole, put this in, and then finish pulling my wire down through here and then put the face plate on, which I'll show you in a few minutes. That's a keyhole saw. I don't know if you can quite see it. Um, you could use another type of saw, maybe even a carpenter's knife. I don't recommend it. And so remember the mud ring? So what I did is I put it where I wanted it to be. I took a pencil, made an outline of where I want to cut. Then with a keyhole saw, which is really well suited to this, I put it about where I'm going to start cutting. Usually what you do is you just kind of twist it until you kind of finally get it in there. And then Okay, so while the guy on the video is busy doing that, if you're wondering why there's a cardboard box right there, it's because when you do this process, it tends to generate a lot of drywall dust, which gets in the carpet. So that box is there just to catch the dust. Another thing that I would have to explain here is that I kind of got ahead of myself making this video and I put the mud ring in first before I dropped the cable. It works, but it's probably better if you leave the mud ring out until after you've dropped your cable and pulled it through. All right, so we've got our hole in the wall, the mud ring. We've got our hole in the top where we cut through the header. And I'm wearing these yellow safety glasses because I forgot to remind you earlier that there are all kinds of scary things up in the ceiling, up above the tiles. So you'll want to protect your eyes. Now for fishing the walls, that's what it's called, fishing the walls, meaning we want to get from the hole in the top down to here. In some really rare cases, you might be able to just drop the cable in the hole in the header and it'll just fall down. You can just stick your hand in there and get it. My experience is that's not how it usually goes. And what's worse is a lot of times, you may be in situations where the hole is not, uh, I mean, the uh, wall is not completely hollow, but it might actually be filled with that fiberglass insulation, which makes things even trickier. So to fish the wall, there's two methods I use. One is fiberglass rods. These are like little three foot segments of fiberglass rods that screw together to make, you know, one long fiberglass rod that you put at the header at the top and push down to the bottom and you reach in with your hand, pull it out, or something known as a fish tape. And, you know, I, there are all kinds of other methods besides these two. These are the two major ones I use, uh, but this is the ones I'm going to focus on. The act of actually getting that fish tape or that fiberglass rod from the ceiling down through the wall and into the hole is a whole other art all by itself. I've got a separate video about that. I'll leave you a link here for. But now that I've accomplished that, then what I do is down at the bottom, I'm going to attach a string to the end of my fish tape and then pull that up through the wall. And then my string will actually end up being the thing that I attach to the cables. All right, here's the fun part we've been waiting for. Them. So I've got my cables to where I want them to be. I got the string from top to bottom. I actually already ran my cat 6A cable. Uh, it's kind of a different animal, so I didn't really want to demonstrate with that one. So, but what typically most people run these days is either the Cat 6 or the Cat 5E. And you can run two cables at one time or you can just do one, but what you want is electrical tape. And what you're going to do is use electrical tape to attach it to the string. So, uh, and one of the things you can do too is if you think you're going to come back and reuse this spot for more cables later, is if you leave your string extra long between top and bottom, give yourself enough slack so that you can kind of use it back and forth like a trolley. All right, so what I'm gonna do is take my string. I'm just gonna kinda, well, sometimes if I do multiple cables, I like to stagger them a little bit. So I'm gonna kinda leave like a few inches in between, take my string, wrap the string around a little bit like that, because if you just put it straight, what'll happen a lot of times is the cable will get stuck and the string will keep on going. 
Then take your electrical tape and attach it to your cable and then just go down and pull your string. Now make sure though that when you do that that you've got some um, slack on the cable in the ceiling because if you're trying to pull with the string, if you're trying to pull the whole entire cable from all the way at the far end, there's going to be too much resistance, the string will come off. So make sure you've got, you know, at least enough, probably about six foot of slack or eight foot of slack so that when you start pulling the string, there's no resistance as it pulled all the way down the bottom. All right, so I finally got my cable to the bottom and I'm gonna take all this string and tape mess off. And then next we're gonna move into the wall plate and the little keystone jacks that we have to take the wires and it's called terminating, terminating to the jacks. All right, so now's the phase where we're gonna put the face plate on the wall and the keystone jacks actually fit in the face plate. So these little holes, these are called keystone jacks or keystones and they fit inside these little holes. And you can get these in a variety of configurations. Uh, I got a four, you can get just a one, two, I think it goes all the way up to six. All right, so these little inserts, these, these keystone jacks, the RJ45s sometimes called, they come in different categories the same way the cables do. So just like I've got three different categories of cable here. I've got the gray one's a six, the white one's a six A, and the blue one's a five E. Well, the same thing is true for these. And the way you'll know, I mean, obviously you'll know it when you buy it, but it'll have like the word cat five E or cat six A right there. So you want to match the type of jack to the type of cable. So let's say we're going to terminate the cat six, the gray one, right? All right, so I'll get my cat six jack right here. All right. And before I can start this though, I need to take and strip the cable. So I need to pull back. I'm sorry. I need to strip the jacket. So this, this outer part is called the jacket. And if you have a stripper, great. If you don't own one, I guess you could hire one. Anyway, so do that a couple times, take it off. I should just be able to break the cable open like that. If you don't have a stripper, you can use uh, just like a pair of snips or something. If you do, use snips or electrician scissors. And you do that, after you do that, what you'll want to do is make a little nick in the jacket, the outer rubbery plastic part. And this little string, which Cat6 and Cat5e have in them, you want to pull that back a little bit. The reason you do that is because if there's a chance that those scissors, those electrician scissors might have made a little cut into the insulation on those wires, you don't want that. So just, you know, do this little extra procedure. All right, and then after you do that, take your scissors and carefully trim off the jacket. And when I say carefully, meaning we want to be careful that we don't accidentally nick any of the insulation on those inside wires. Insulation being the, the orange and the white, the brown, the blue. That's all like kind of a plastic rubber insulation. All right, and then go ahead and cut off your string. Okay, so now we got that. Now in CAT 6 and 6A, they have this like little insert in the middle. It's um, sometimes referred to, I think they call it a spline. Sometimes it'll be flat like that, or sometimes it'll be a um, like a like a cross, like a four-way. Anyway, we want to go ahead and get rid of that. Now we take the appropriate category keystone jack. So here we got my Cat Six, and if you've never done this before, and I've made several videos on how to do this, so I'll tell you what, I'll leave you a little link right there that pops up if you want to go see a more detailed video of how to do this, but they're color coded. So just like these wires are color coded, the jacks are color coded. So the jacks have got like, for instance, blue and brown, they got like orange and, and green, and there's kind of like a, like a solid green and like a shaded white green and like a, a shaded, I mean, a, yeah, a solid blue and a shaded solid blue. So what that does is it corresponds to these. So if I take these little caps off, these are called dust caps. Okay, and that exposes the little slots that the wires need to go into. What you want to do is match the wire colors into the slots just above where the little color labels are. So in this case, I've got like a, you know, white, blue shaded section and a solid blue. What I'll be doing is I'll be taking the blue wire like this and I'll be putting the, so, so yeah, these are twisted together. This is called a white blue pair. I'm going to put the white wire into the slot that matches the shaded white blue, and I'll put the solid blue wire into the solid blue slot. Anyway, so you just repeat that process for the rest of the jack. And when you're doing this, you don't want there to be a lot of 
space between your jack housing and un, uh, unjacketed uh, cable. So we want to get our jacket up near the housing of the uh, jack. All right, so let me finish this real quick and then I'm going to show you punching them down. All right, so you see how I've got all the wires into the appropriate slots? They match the colors. Now you might be saying, hey, why is it blue and brown on this side for both spots, but over here the orange and the green are alternated? That's because one pattern is what they call 568A, one is called 568B. It doesn't really matter which one you use. I think B is a little more common. Uh, so what matters is that if you do use B here, is that you match the same B style wiring pattern on your other end, on your patch panel or, or whatever way you terminate it on the other end. Now, we're gonna take this, which is a punch down tool. It's got two sides to it. It's got a cut side and then I guess just non-cut side. And inside is a little blade that's called a 110 blade. And the reason there's cut and no cut is that one side has a little like extra sharp little pointy thing here that when you push down, what it does is it cuts off the excess wire, at least in theory. It doesn't always work in practice. All right, so what I'm gonna do, my favorite way to do these is on the floor. Although some technicians like to do it on the wall. My problem with doing it on the wall is that oftentimes it makes a little dent in the drywall. So let's get this down on the floor. And yes, my hand will be in the way. I know people frequently complain about that when I do this procedure. So all I'm doing is I'm just, I'm taking the blade and I'm putting it on top of the slot and the action of pushing down and making that clicking noise is pushing the wire all the way to the bottom of the slot where it mates with a set of uh, exposed metal teeth and strips off the, the insulation off the copper wire. And I'm just repeating that process all the way around the whole, all the way around the whole jack. If you want to see a more detailed view of what that was like when I did that, you can go and look at the um, little link I, I left there for you of a, a more close-up side view of that punch down process. Now, like I said, the cut is supposed to make the wire just completely get cut and fall off. I don't know why, maybe my blade's getting old, but all it really ends up doing for me is just kind of perforating it. Yeah. All right, now that I've got all my excess wire off of there, that jack is ready to go. I like to give it one more visual inspection just to double check my wire colors, make sure I put them down where I thought they should be. And then lastly, you put the dust caps on. Now, it then mates into the plate. So what you do, and you take, there's kind of like, like little lips, like a little spring-loaded lip. So this is the top, do it like this. And that's how you do it. And then they, and then I'm going to put th three of these in here, but they also make like a little blank that you can put in here if you're not going to do that fourth spot. All right, well, let's me get this finished up, and then we'll move over to the patch panel. All right, now we're back at the patch panel. So remember, this is the centralized location where you're going to put your networking equipment, like your switch and your router. So see, I brought my cables in. From the ceiling, I cut a little hole in the, in the uh, ceiling tile, dressed them down neatly. Now, some people will say, well, why don't you run those on the inside of the wall? I guess that's a personal preference. For me, that's actually end up being more of a pain, especially later on when you want to try to add more cables later. But up to you. Anyway, so what is here is what's known as a Category 5 patch panel. That's because it says Category 5E right there. And every port on here is Category 5E which is fine if that's all I'm going to do. However, because I have a mixed set of cables, some are six, some are 6A, some are 5E, I'm going to use a versatile empty patch panel where what I can do is I just put the same keystone inserts that you saw me terminate on the wall a few minutes ago, I'll just be putting those in the respective spots. So that allows me to have a mix of different types of jacks and different types of media. So for instance, I could have telephone jacks in here. I could also have uh, cable TV uh, inserts. They make keystones for, for cable TV. So that's just my personal preference. If all you're doing is one type of cable, like say Cat6 or Cat5E, you can get just a Cat6 or Cat5E patch panel. The concept is the same in terms of the color matching. So if I open up the back of this Cat5E patch panel, what you'll see is just another series of those slots and colors. So the process is the same as I just showed you when I terminated the jack. 
except this time I'm just kind of dressing the wires in from the wall neatly and then laying them out and punching them down one at a time. But like I said, I'm going to use the empty modular style patch panel for my process. All right, and that's the finished product. The patch panel with those individually terminated different category jacks, 5E, 6, and 6A. So all that's left now, in case you're not familiar with networking, is to take a patch cable or ethernet cord and connect to the appropriate outlet port, dress the cable through your wire management, and then plug it into your switch or your, your cable modem if it has a switch built into it and then that carries the signal from your internet to your jack up to the wires and the ceiling down the wall and over to the outlet that we just installed so if you're ready to put in your own small business or home network i hope that helps you out thanks for watching